So if your organization stores data in the cloud, you're using cloud computing, you need to be able to use queries to pull information from your large data set so you can analyze it. So we are looking at structured data, relational databases, we can put them into information into tables, and then we can use MySQL to pull data for us to analyze. So what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be looking at how to pull data from Google Cloud by using their BigQuery Studio and some publicly available data sets. Before we do that, let's just talk about some basics in terms of relational databases and SQL, particularly the concept of joins, because we need to figure out what information we want to pull from the database so that we can do some analysis. All right, so let's talk about SQL. SQL is a structured query language, and it's used for those relational databases. So we have structured data, meaning it can be put into a table, and we have a relational database, if you recall from our previous videos. We can use entity relationship diagrams, or ER models, to show how one table ties to another table. And so you recall from our entity uh, relationship diagrams that we have a primary key, so the unique item in the table, and then we have foreign keys. And those foreign keys tie to and show up in other tables, which allows us to tie the tables together. And so we're going to use SQL, Structured Query Language, to pull information so we can analyze it from Python. I'm just going to move my head for a moment. So we're going to be looking before we get to Python and Google Cloud. Let's just take a look at a very simple example. So we have report cards and in our report card, we have a name, an age, a grade, a class, and we have attendance, the student name, absence and sport. And so what you should see at the top of this entity relationship diagram is not the word report card because that's the name of the table. But you should have the name name because that is the primary key in our entity relationship diagram. And name is also a foreign key because it appears in our attendance database where again the primary key is going to be the student's name. And then we're also going to have the number of absences and we're going to have uh, how many days they miss or sorry, which sport they're involved in, because some of their absences might be tied to what sport they are involved in. So then let's suppose that this is our database. Here's the name of our individuals. Here's their age. Here's their grade. Here's what class they are in. So that is going to be that first table. Sorry, let's go back here. That is going to be the report card with the primary key being the name and the foreign key also being the name. Okay. We could use SQL to pull information. And the key with SQL is the term select, from, and where. So we could select grade from the report card table, that's the name of the table, where class equals science. And so if we did this, it would go to that table and it would say, okay, pull the grades from this table report card, wherever the class equals science. So you can see for Mary, Mary has an A in science and Liam has an A in science. So the output would be A and A because we asked it only to select the grade. You could decide to select multiple things, give us the name and the grade. But you always have to specify what table it's coming from. And then you add where if you have any conditions that are going to limit or constrain it. Now, what if we want to tie together our two data sets? We have the table, which is the report card with our primary key name, and we have our table with absences with our primary key student name. And of course, those are also foreign keys because you can see they're the same names. So we would need to first figure out if we can tie these two databases together. To do that, we can do a command called select distinct. Unlike select, which provides everything from that variable, select distinct provides just the unique list. So if we said select distinct from the table call report card and order it by name, so it's gonna be alphabetical A to Z, 
we can provide the output. And it would provide Jose, Liam, Mary, Peter, and Stephen. We could do the same command for the second table, select distinct, so provide us the unique names in the variable student name from the table called attendance and order it by student name. So same thing A to Z. When we do this, we realize that they aren't all the same names. So Dana is in student name, but not in name. So in one table, but not the other. And Stephen is in name, but not in student name. So it's in, is in one table and not the other. So if we're going to tie these tables together and pull information from them collectively, we do need to have some overlap. Right, we need to have some of the names be the same. Now, if none of the names are the same, then we're not gonna be able to pull information from the tables combined. We could pull information from each uh, individually. So let's look at different types of joins. So a join can be an inner join, an outer join, a left join, or a right join. So an inner join, is going to be the people who appear on both tables. So we could create a command in SQL that says name, age, grade, class, and absences. So provide us the name, age, and grade. And if we just go back here, name, age, and grade is gonna come from our report card table. And then absences is going to come from our absence table, or attendance table, sorry, attendance table. So the inner join is going to pull variables from the two tables, name, age, grade, class, and absences, and it's going to pull records for any individual who appears in both tables. So we're going to do from report card, inner join, attendance. Okay, so from the two tables, we want an inner join, that's going to be the people who appear in both. And so you're going to have to provide an on. What are you tying it together with? We're going to tie it together with report card dot name. So the variable name coming from table report card is going to be equal to attendance dot student name. So here we're saying that the name in one table is the same as student name in the other table. And find where the same people appear in both and then output the information. So what it does is it looks at the list and says, okay, well, Stephen is not on the second table and Dana's not on the first table. So they're gonna be excluded when we create our new data set. And so we have here, Mary, Peter, Jose, and Liam, their age, grade, class, and absences. So it's created a new table out of the two for the people who appear in both. In comparison, an outer join is going to include people who are not in one table, but are in the other. So if we represent this as a Venn diagram, so we have a circle representing the report card and a circle representing attendance, it's not just where the people overlap, but it's all the people. Now, when you do your SQL, you can do select star. If you do select star, it'll take all the variables. So notice in our previous example, we said just name, age, grade, class, and absences. If you want all the variables, then you would just put a star there instead. We still need to specify from, and we're going to specify our table report card, and it's gonna be a full outer join with attendance. And we are going to join these two tables based on report card dot name and attendance dot student name. Okay. So in order for these to be merged together, there does, seem, there does need to be some overlap in those two variables. So notice the table that is outputted has Mary, Peter, Jose, and Liam, who appear in both, but it also has Stephen and Dana. And notice for Stephen and Dana, there are variables that are empty, and that's because they're only in one table and not the other, so we don't have data for them. So everybody was included in our full outer join. A left join, whichever table you mention first in your from, is the left one. 
So we could say select all variables, that's the star, from, and then report card is the one we list first, that's the first table. And then if you left join and you join it with attendance, notice that in our Venn diagram, this is everybody in the report card includes the people that are also in attendance. But if someone is on the attendance table and not in the report card, they're not included. So again, we're going to have to specify what's tying these two tables together. So report card dot name and attendance dot student name. And what's outputted is this table that you see here. Notice that Mary, Peter, Jose, and Liam, who are in both tables, all of their information appears. And then Stephen, who is only in the report card and not in the attendance table, appears in this with absence and sport empty because we don't have any information from the attendance table on the individual. So we've taken everybody from the left table, and that means that Dana, who is only on the right table, is excluded. In comparison, a right join is whichever table you list second in your from, that's the right table. And so if we select star, so all variables, from, report card, right join, attendance, and again, there must be a variable to tie them together. So here that's name and student name. But notice in this example, because it is a right join, it is everybody in the attendance table. And we pull from the report card any information we have on them. So Mary, Peter, Jose, and Liam, it's a full, um, there's values for every variable. Dana, who is only on the attendance table, we only have information about absences and the sport they're involved in because they're not in the report card table. So in a right join, everybody in the right table is included. Anyone who is only in the left table, which in this case is uh, Stephen, is not included in the output. So whenever you're merging your data sets together, we want to pull data from different sources to do analysis. Then we're going to do a query to create our new table, and that way we can do our analysis. So in order to merge the tables together, we need to figure out what they have in common. So what is that foreign key that ties the, the tables together? And are they formatted in a way where we can look at that they can match uh, the foreign key? So we use that select distinct to help us find out how it is listed and to see if we have a match. In our next video, we're going to do this in Google Cloud using BigQuery. Uh, so we'll continue in our next video.